You know what? I don't really care what kind of a job you're in or what kind of income you make or even where you live. Every man, dare I say person, lives three types of lives in one life. So if you like your boots, you need to figure out what three types of boots you might need in your life. Keep watching and I'll explain. G'day, so how are you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy and if you're a first timer, my name is Tech and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of these lands I live and work on, the Wajit people of Western Australia. Today, I'm going to explain why every person is going to need three types of boots in their lives. I don't care if you're a manual labourer or an office worker, whether you earn just enough to give your family a good life or if you're a millionaire. And I don't care where you live. All of us live three lives in our one typified by the three types of activities that we take part in. Whomever we are, we may go to work in an office or go to a church or to a christening or to a wedding or a funeral, somewhere where we'll need a dressy outfit, either like a full-blown suit or at least good dress pants, dress shirt and a tailored jacket of some kind. And we all probably live a proportion of our lives in relaxed casual mode, whether that's after work or maybe at work in a relaxed office or at the weekends entertaining or meeting the guys at the pub for a Sunday session. And finally, all of us will have occasion for rugged outfits, perhaps because we work with our hands or in the outdoors, or we like to go camping or hiking or fishing, or we just have to dig in the garden on Sundays. So in your three lives in one, you will be wearing a dressy outfit, a casual outfit, and a rugged or outdoor outfit. And since you've come to a boot review channel, I'm going to take this video to show you what boots you can wear with each of these outfits within three price ranges. Up to US $300, from US $300 to $500, and from US $500 and over. I'll leave links to where you can get the boots mentioned in the description below. And while you check them out, if you like what you see, click on the like button too. Oh, and guess what? These are going to be my choices. So there are going to be a lot of disagreements in the comments below. Just keep it civil, huh? So to kick off, I'm going to look at dress boots or at least some commonly available boots that look dressy and can be worn with suits uh, or at least business casual attire. And because most of the boots I'll be talking about will be available on American websites, I'll mostly be talking in US dollars when I'm talking dollars. In the up to $300 range, I'm going to pick the Thursday boot company Wingtip Boots, made in the shoe capital of Latin America, Leon in Mexico. They sell for $235 and because Thursday is a web-based direct-to-consumer company, you can get them anywhere. Their wingtips come in a variety of colours and uh, different uppers leathers, but for the dressy versions, I'd pick the darker smooth grain leather models. This is one that they call dark oak in uh, smooth and pebbled full grain leather. It's good you're welted for durability and water resistance and it comes with a studded outsole similar to the popular day-night outsole. Some people might say that brogues are not truly dressy, but I think that distinction went a long time ago. In the UK and in most Commonwealth countries as well as in Europe, brogues can now be seen worn with a suit, especially in this dark colour. And as a brogued boot, it's also versatile because, yes, it can be dressed down under chinos or even jeans. Next, into the 300 to 500 category, I would choose the Grant Stone diesel boot in this black Chrome XL iteration. Grant Stone is another direct-to-consumer company, so it's easily available online, and this one sells for $380. So, well down at the lower end of the up to 500 range, but it's absolutely packed with value. Where the uh, Thursday boots leather was tanned in Mexico, which is good to begin with, this upper leather is tanned by the famous Horween Tannery in Chicago, USA. Grant Stone construction quality is exceptionally good. 
Yes, made in China, but the finished quality rivals any made in Europe or made in America product. In this case, the veg tanned leather sole construction, also good you welted, uh, the quality of stitching and finishing, and so on, are all above what you would expect of a low $300 boot. In Black Chrome XL, you can wear this with a suit or with chinos and sports coat, and you can even dress it down to jeans, so it is totally versatile. If you want to watch my full review, you can check out the link in the corner up there. Then, moving on uh, up to over $500, I choose the best Chelsea boot ever made, the RM Williams Craftsman boot. In Australia, these cost 649 Aussie dollars and about 540 US dollars in the States. Still made in Australia, they sell on the uh, various different countries' websites uh, and have a pretty extensive range of either branded or third-party retailers in pretty much every market in the world. Uh, this pair is in black yearling leather. That's a calf that's less than a year old, which provides a thin but very strong leather uh, and is on a thin leather uh, sole for dressiness. You can get them with the comfort rubber sole that's not that much thicker in profile. Both are 270 degree Goodyear welted, uh, so can be easily resold to last you a few decades. It may surprise some people that I chose a Chelsea boot as a dress boot, but uh, here in boardrooms in Australia, lawyers, bankers and accountants wear these with a suit. And that trend certainly appears also in the UK and now is pervading uh, into more places in the business world. Its last is very dressy, yet its sleek shape is versatile enough to be worn on horseback in the paddock with jeans or with moleskin trousers or chinos, as well as smart gear. I've taken pains to explain the versatility of those three boots previously, that they can be dressed down, that they can be uh, worn not just with a suit, but as business casual. Not only that, they can also be worn with even more casual gear like jeans and say polo shirts. However, assuming you want more than one pair of boots, what might you wear with your casual gear? Let's say you dress for a social backyard barbecue, or you come home from work and you change to take the dog for a walk, uh, or you decide to prop up the bar at your local. What boot would you pull on then? Well, starting at the under $300 range for relaxed or social occasions, you can't really go wrong with an easy pull-on Chelsea boot. They're easy to leave by the door and pull on when you go out, uh, and the more relaxed makeups are comfortable in both uppers and the sole. This one is the Rhodes Blake Chelsea boot from Huckbury. Rhodes is their footwear house brand, and this boot is made from a soft waterproof treated uh, full grain rough out suede made in Leon in Mexico. The Goodyear welted PU wedge sole is comfortable, really easy to break in, and slip resistant as well as being pretty durable. They sell for $198 and is available from Huckbury's website and can be shipped anywhere in the world. You can check out my full review up there, uh, but they fit well and QC is consistent and more than passable. Their lower price will be because of the use of uh, leatherboard materials in the midsole and the heel counters, but it is horses for courses and these fit the bill for an attractive Chelsea boot for any casual outfit, uh, whether it be five pocket pants, uh, chinos or jeans with button-down shirts, polo shirts, even t-shirts. There's a lot of relaxed old money aesthetic in these boots. Right, now moving into the uh, 300 to 500 range, I picked this pair of Parker's Allen boots in spruce kudu. Now if you're a boot collector or just generally mad about boots, you know that Parker's went the full 10 rounds when COVID hit and their supply chain got severely disrupted. This one is an older makeup made in their New York contracted factory, but they have now moved most of their manufacturing to Spain. And from my experience of their more recent Spanish made boots, I believe they now see a more consistent QC from that Spanish factory. Uh, this is available from their website. Yes, another direct to consumer company for $388. That's not at all bad value for a boot made from Charles Stead's Kudu Tanage. Uh, it's an African antelope, and it shows the most amazing uh, natural scars and imperfections on the surface, leaving you with a green boot that will attract attention under all your casual outfits. Kudu is another light 
uh, but very supple leather and it's easy to break in. Uh, uh, but because of the fiber structure, it's pretty good against nicks and cuts in use. The construction is solid with triple and double stitching where it matters. It has a semi-gusseted tongue, veg tan insole and midsole, and in this case, a day-night outsole. But newer ones will have a commando lugged sole. Of course, it's Goodyear welded for water resistance and recraftability, and the new versions have a steel shank, whereas these have a fiberglass shank. You can watch my full view up there. You might think the green colour is hard to pair with your outfits, but you'd be surprised. Being a plain toe boot, they can surprisingly fit uh, into most casual outfits. They go well with uh, clean dark denim jeans or earth toned chinos in khaki or dark brown, but in my opinion, the best way to match these is to wear single tone outfits like say all black uh, or blue jeans and blue shirts. Make them stand out. Above all though, don't wear them with green or you look like a leprechaun. <laughs> Um, the comfortable and low profile last means that they can pair with all your casual outfits from neat to totally relaxed. Then, moving to the uh, over 500 range, I would choose this boot, which is the well over $500 range boot. <laughs> this is Viberg's stitch down service boot in brown chrome XL. Viberg is a Canadian company that's been around for generations and sell through their own website as well as through collaborations with other men's uh, clothing websites and some uh, brick and mortar retailers as well, but mainly in North America. There is a retail store in Australia though. Uh, it's called the Up There store over in Melbourne. Unlike buying from some of the other websites of this particular price range, there is not much of a weight, which is an advantage. Most of the other brands of uh, this kind of quality and this price are generally made to order, meaning you'll have to wait a few weeks, if not months, between making your order and then being made and then shipped. Viberg seem to have boots in stock, and apart from standard Chrome Excel, they open special runs of different leathers, uh, but they'll be made in stock whenever the run is announced so that they'll be ready for the sale. These cost 800 US on their site and over a thousand Aussie in the Melbourne outlet. So, not cheap. But what do you get? They are recognized as having probably the best clicking or leather selection out there. Using the uh, stitch down method of construction, the boots are durable, water resistant and recraftable, so they'll last you a long time. The construction, while it's machine stitched rather than hand bottomed, is very precise and sophisticated. Coming from a history of making work boots for forestry workers, the making of this boot rivals any English dress boot maker from Northampton and selling in high class German street stores in London. This particular makeup is Chrome Excel from Horween and is on a genuine UK made day night sole. Having flirted with foam fillers in the past, Viberg uh, service boots now uh, is an all leather constructed boot from the uppers, of course to the toe puffs and heel counters and in, into the insoles, midsoles, and they use cork fillers. The materials used are gold standard and the quality control is exceptional. I'll do a video of this makeup soon, but you can check out my review of another pair uh, up there in a leather called Culata. They're also very versatile boots, as you'd hope for an expensive boot so that you can reduce cost per wear. Keep this one polished and it would not go amiss under a suit. Uh, but for most of the time, you'd want to wear this as a comfortable casual boot, again from neat casual to rugged casual. So, moving on to the third category, boots suitable for your outdoor activities. Now, I hesitate to say work boots because that has some distinct connotations. I don't work with my hands, although I'm no stranger to that, having worked as a builder's labourer and a North Sea oil rig roustabout in my late teens many years ago, working my way through university and through article ship as a chartered accountant in London in the 1970s and early 80s. I only say this to allay the fears of mostly, I have to say, American workers who feel a kind of stolen valor thing when people who don't work with their hands talk about work boots. But mainly, I'm calling this category rugged outdoor rather than work boots because uh, builders and tradies in Australia wouldn't use any of these heritage style boots as work boots, preferring uh, today's modern lightweight Poron and Gore-Tex style work boots, or good old fashioned Aussie Chelsea work boots like Blunnies, uh, Redbacks, Rossies, or even Mongrel boots. 
Anyway, I see this category as that part of your life where you'd go for a long hike in the bush uh, or go camping and fishing in the bush and out back and need some protective footwear or maybe pull on to dig in the garden or yard or maybe climb on the roof to do some quick clean or repairs. So outdoor rather than protective uh, work boots like Nick's or JK's and boots like that. Let's start with under 300 and just under 300 for now at $299.99. Indeed, some leathers in this style are already over $300 by about $10, but I would still put it in this category as it's in that grey borderline area and honestly, I'm not sure what I'd replace it with in the under 300s, maybe thoroughgoods, um, that are as good as these. Yeah, of course, every boot lover's open or closet desire, a Red Wing Classic Mock Toe. This design, uh, in the initial 877 8-inch mock toe, has been around since the 1950s. Originally designed for farmers and hunters where the traction tread wedge sole kept dirt off the soles when they went home indoors and remained comfortable out in the outdoors over any kind of hunting or farming landscape. This one is the 875 6-inch version in the iconic orange Aura Legacy Uppers tanned by Red Wing's in-house tannery SB foot tanning. Notoriously painful to break in, once broken in they are incredibly comfortable and protective. Red Wing boots are available online as well as many retail stores across the world. In Oz there's one outlet per uh, almost every major capital city and their own branded stores are all over Asia. The Mokto design provides roomy comfort in the toe box while the soft wedge sole gives you all the shock absorption you need. Even though Red Wing is a huge company making way more boots per annum than any of the other brands I've mentioned, attention to detail and QC is still really good. Yeah, sometimes you see a boot on social media where maybe the quarters are a bit askew or the hardware is misaligned, but as a percentage of boots made, that's really a tiny minuscule amount. 360 degree Goodyear welted, apart from comfort, they are durable and recraftable and unless you decide to swim a river, will keep your feet dry under most conditions. You can wear them with your scruffiest jeans and t-shirts, or dare I say it, in your most hipster Carhartt work pants and flannels, and they'll fit right in. Dive deep into how they're made in my video up there. Okay, so moving into the 300 to 500 category, and let me go a little further afield. This is Bordon Colombia's Tucano boot in waxed medium brown suede. Bordon is a reasonably new entrant into the world of heritage star boots started in 2019 by partners uh, Andres and Natalia. I cheat a little because while they are a direct-to-consumer online boot maker, they only make boots in about four, maybe five group MTO sessions a year. Okay, maybe not totally easily available, but every few months isn't too inaccessible. Um, the Tucano is not actually a work boot or even an outdoor boot, but it is built tough and I've personally taken these out for some extreme hikes across some extreme terrain. They sell for the low to mid 300s depending on the leather. Uh, this one is an Italian tanned wax suede and while comfortable, is sturdy in the hand. Uh, it's more than a soft supple suede and it feels more like full grain wax flesh because of the uh, input of waxes into the tanning process and the lining. The construction is double row stitch down, so combined with the waterproof wax suede it is very water resistant and it is recraftable. The insole and midsole are slabs of veg tan leather with a steel shank. Newer versions have a leather shank as well as a leather heel counter uh, and the filling in the midsole is cork. The Outsole and uh, heel top lift are Vibram Commando Lug products. As they gain experience, quality of construction is getting better and better. But even uh, in this boot, their second ever batch and their first stitch down batch, this has withstood everything I've thrown at it and it's protected my feet and ankles on rocks and mud. You can watch my detailed review up there. Moving on now though to uh, uh, the over 500 range in the uh, rugged and outdoor category. I'm picking the white MP boot in their signature cinnamon wax flesh. A close second that I had really had to think about is the Truman boot on their 79 last in Java wax flesh. But I chose the MP boots purely for my personal love for the white MP service boot 
of which I now have four pairs. Truman boots came close though, very close. I'm cheating again here by the way because while White's MP boots are mostly in stock on their website and through collaborations with others like uh, Division Road, nevertheless, depending on the makeup, you may have to wait for your order to be built. But taking all that into consideration and the fact that their rival, in my mind at least, the Truman boot is currently having stock built up, uh, they're still a good choice. This one is in the 50-50 last rather than the usual MP last. The difference being in that their back half is based on the 55 last, which is narrow at the back, and the front is based on the MP last, giving a snug fit and roomy comfort in front. Uh, these are around $700, and in Melbourne, at the Urahara store in Collingwood, they sell for around 900 Aussie. So, like I asked of the Vibergs, what do you get for that kind of money? You get a pretty tough, rugged boot that's built like a work boot, even though it isn't really technically a work boot. I wouldn't recommend that you uh, wear this onto a building job site. However, it can certainly be worn rugged on a long hike, say, or uh, to go camping, fishing, uh, or perhaps a hunting trip in the bush. It is a heavily, sturdily built boot with all that leather under your feet, giving you a very supportive arch area and a lot of protection against turning your ankle or against branches and rocks. It's also a boot that looks like how a child might draw a boot if you asked, you know, cap toe, chunky, uh, which I find attractive. And that's it. My belief is that uh, whatever you do for work and whatever lifestyle you mainly live, there's always a place for a dress boot, a casual boot and a rugged boot. Bearing in mind the different prices and what you can get for those prices, I've tried to show you what I think would be good choices in your life, depending on your lifestyle. Look, I know there's a lot who will disagree with my choices. That's what the boot nerd world is really like. We all have our favourites. But I am basing my choices on the boots that are in my collection, uh, not those outside it. And even so, I've had to think really hard about what not to include. So there. <laughs> if you like what you saw, give me a like at the bottom. And if you're not a subscriber, fix that right now and click on subscribe. And down there, you'll also find links to the boot websites so you can do your own research and maybe decide on one or two of them. In the meantime, stay tuned for more boot reviews coming up. Until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon.